Jehovah Malak, Horam Alamat. Jehovah Malak, Yami Rakis. Jehovah Gadol, Makarian Tios. Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Elohim, Kurios Tios Pantakreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Olam Olam, Jehovah Dabar. Shami Yamim, Yatsab. Ibasilian, Kurios, Otios, O Pantakreta. Basilias, Basilian, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Elda et Jehovah. Monon Alatanian Tian, Jesus Christos. Derek Emunabakar, Mishvat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the chimes and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sitkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. We don't deserve, we don't turn, we don't work for it. Yet it is the gracious will of Lord God the Father as he called Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3 in verse number 8. The word Yasaf. To do more, to do again and again, the same thing what God the Father has done on our behalf. He wants none to perish, but everyone should be completely saved and come to the thorough knowledge of God. The same thing we read in 1 Timothy 2, 4. And this is the will of God the Father. For that cause he keeps us alive day by day to learn, to look, to perceive, to understand and to inspect how wise we could be than our enemies. The enemies being our old sin nature, being powered by Satan, diverting your mind from the will of God and from the word of God. So how wise you can deal and that's the theme for us to understand. Dear brethren, the things that have been prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past by the will of God the Father, what He intended for us in eternity past, we shall learn them after this prayer. Use the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins, so that either in the past or in the present dispensation, it is always to walk with Lord God the Father before Him in accord with truth and in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Without walking with Him in truth and in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, we will be the people worshipping with lips but not and never in truth. For that cause we find always the anger of Lord God before us. And as long as the anger of Lord God is in his face on behalf of us, so long you shall not have soundness in your health or to be having no flawless. How to make him to be happy over us? 
how to make him to rejoice over us? The very simple answer is, take up your cross, follow my Christ, execute the will of God the Father. Besides all such odd infinite circumstances which are against wherewith you think in this world, it's not possible that we walk by faith alone. It's requiring some things for us to do. All those reasons will vanish off because the people whom you meet, they aren't known the word of God. It's what we have been revealed under the name of Yahweh, the gift of revolution to the sinful mankind, this great infallible and ignorant word of God. And we meet the people in and around as we look in comparison with Daniel wisdom to those astrologers, soothsayers, or the standards of those crafty men. They all fail. In and around the world when we get along to be in touch with other people, they talk either in the standards of these things. Enchanters, soothsayers, crafty men. But they are not the word of God, but we are the word of God and the light of God. And what we know, they do not know. And we have been given the spirit to become a precious vessel, having in our lips the knowledge of Bible doctrine. We read that in yesterday, Proverbs 20, verse number 15. And when we open up our mouth, if it is not in the wisdom of God, then we are giving an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme on behalf of us. Because we are not looking what is the will and the word of God and the plan of God for our lives according to the mind of God. So wasting not our time, dear brethren, we shall look and understand why there is no health, why there is no good health for us. As the way we need to look till he could convert and become like these little children, you shall know as enter into the kingdom of God teaching to us the principles how we have to obey the voice of God and the work of God. But we are not entrusted to become the children of God in the standards of becoming or learning from our own children. The way how they look along, they do not know what you have been feeding them, yet they learn, yet they take it. And they are been having any grudges, they don't keep it for a, li for a lifetime or for a long time. They just forget and forgo and they go on. In the same manner, Christ our Lord our God claims you have to be like these children. And it purely depends upon us how to be flawless if we don't have the children nature in us. Because the anger of the Lord God still abideth upon us when we don't walk and do the will of God. So dear brethren, understanding the things that have been prepared and kept for us on today's date, we shall have a word of prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again sanctifying ourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this word. Day by day, O oh Lord, it's your treasure for us to learn. Without this knowledge of Bible doctrine, Father, we don't have any life on this earth. You have called us to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, daily carrying our cross, following thee, waiting upon the doorpost of the temple of God, to listen and learn thy discourse which have taught for us. This word itself is our life, O Lord. If not, your anger abides upon us, and we will not have that great strength in us. As God the Father goes on to teach for us, O Lord, the standards of his will, to establish his covenant, to have great essence and substance or great life in us depends. Nothing but we know thy word and we not to know that you shall not be angry abiding upon us. To the section, Father, the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Father. Amen. The things pertaining to Psalms 38, which we are taking. David, Psalm of Rebound. Till he could rebound, he says, what will happen? The same thing over here for us in verse number 3. There is no soundness. We read that word from the origin called as Thama. The word over here is Methom, M-E-T-H-O-M. But the origin of the word comes from called as Thama. And the word meant to say for us, stating to the point, 
that with the proposition it meant to say, how long shall I be far away from the soundness of your health, which you have designed for us? The wholesomeness, the completeness, the standards which you have asked for us, how long shall I be far away in my flesh? In simple words he says, I don't have this soundness in my flesh because of your anger abiding on me. So how long you want to be far away from the things pertaining to the grace of God to be encircled in you? The greater you use rebound and get back to the fellowship, the sooner you will be restored back to the work of God. And as you march every day, growing from milk to bread, from bread to meat, and do the will of, will of God the Father, the great good pleasure of Him, His anger will be far away from us. And as soon as His anger is far away from us, we shall enjoy the great soundness in this flesh. The logic is very simple. So he asks the question, How long, O Lord? The solution is with you. Kneel down in the presence of God the Father then and there, confess your sins, get back and say, God, I am going to become a scribe. I am going to do thy will by joining as a disciple because you have called us to be as disciples in the Lord. And not just into the standards of words, but in deed. Now that's what he willed, he says, in Thelo Ethel of Colossians 1.27. This is what he wills. The plausious riches of God should be made known among the Gentiles, for which cause, he says in Colossians 1.28, we preach, we teach, we admonish, and make everyone to be perfect and complete in the sight of God, according to the effectual power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, operating in us. So dear brethren, the ministry of the pastor teacher is to, care, is to make you to realize the importance of this mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, operating in us. So we need to understand how long that's what it is happening today for us, a great failure. Dear brethren, coming to First Peter chapter 1, we have some things to learn from there. Particularly, beginning with verse number 8 and following, it says that, Having not seen you love, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. This is what we need to look. They have done it diligently. The word is exuraneo, taken from ek ex and followed by Year a neo or e r e u n a o, that is, with the diligent search and investigation, and they prophesy the grace that should come unto you, and searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. The reason why I am saying this for you this. Prophets diligently searched on that. But now it is being revealed by the Holy Spirit of God and the things what you have been given Angels also desire to look into it. The word desire is epithumio, longing for. Longing for the word called as paracupto, to stoop to a thing in order to look at it, or wrangle their necks. What we have been given, the privilege, what they have been given in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is nothing but the mind of Christ, the angels also want to look. What best an angel can look at and it can think? What does man have to play with his body? He has his two hands and two legs. But the angels have wings with them and that too in that order of the ranks of the wings, they have six wings, two covering their feet, two with fly and the two with they cover their face. So we have the seraphims, cherubims being described for us. If they look upon us, they may say, what is this man? The same thing we read in Psalms 2. What is this man that you are mindful about them, O Lord? 
what best they have just look at a man if you look into an animal you may have four beasted animal four beast animal four footed animal and that if you look into the crawling creatures how they go on the belly and if you look upon a fish what they have scales but fins so you look upon them and you understand what is there there is nothing in that likewise angels also look upon you and they say what is there in you you think you are great you have only hands you have only legs but no wings but god the father has given you such kind of a great privilege so that you could be now flawless in his presence so that you could be free from the wrath of his anger abiding upon you by doing his will and the things what they have been given unto us the angels also stoop down to look and think what are these but today the believers are not aware what an important document we have in our hand the completed canon of scripture the things what you have been given angels love to look into it the things what you are experiencing the angels love to have into it that's why you have been given much more greater than the things pertaining to the past dispensation you have been given the indwelling trinity you have been given the completed canon of scripture you have been given the pleasure of ultimate privileges of all time and you have been said the day when you believe in christ that's the day you begin to reign with christ do you know what a privilege we have do you know what a great thing god the father has given to us to be aware about these dogs about these evil workers who don't teach you this truth and yet what the angels desire to look into it they are worried constantly what is the privileges given for the church age in this divine diana sphere of this 36 things given to you at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone what a believer you can be in the lord a 40 things being compiled once again by robert bunker theme the lewis perry chaff of what he has designed those 36 things and what you are in the lord what privileges you have you have maybe appearing just an ordinary not having wings but the impact of you is extraordinary for the ages to come one upon the another and that's why we have been said in first corinthians 63 we have been called to judge the angels and that's the reason in first peter 1 when his writing is teaches to us the angels also desire to look into wherefore he says since the angels are there constantly looking and doing what it is on account of this the greek word dio the word wherefore and therefore you may think it's a conclusion part depending upon the above passage but it is the same thing over here but it is on a do it meant to say on account of these angels which are looking into stepping into you cannot be sickened in your flesh you cannot make god the father to have anger over you that's what the simple logic would be there for us to learn on account of this what the angels are stepping in to look and to desire he says number 1 grid up the word grid up is called as anazonumi it is a metaphor derived from the practice of the orientals who in order to be unimpeded in their movements were accustomed when straying a journey or engaging in any work to bind their long flowing garments closely around their bodies and fasten them with a leather belt that meant to say what in simple words if you have been risen with Christ seek those things that are above and grid up your lions anything that is distracting you to do the will of god and the work of god from there you tie up those things so that they shall no longer be for you as a hurdles or to say in simple terms you are carrying bags the bags of destructions what you do cut it off here what they used to do as a matter for they used to bind them up in the same manner he says on account of this the details of life what you are concentrating on this earth they are not much more needed than into the comparison of the things that have been given for us and what it is because the angels are also looking into understand what they can be but greater than that we have been given something great to realize on this earth So he says you have been given to judge these angels you have been given something great though you have only hand and legs and no wings to you you have been given something great where the angels do not have they have lost it we have been made to sit in the throne of god though the rebellious nature of satan right from the beginning the chief of these all fallen angels the satan the satan adversary of us who thinks it is wiser than anyone on this earth 
We read that in Psalm 119 in verse number 97 to teach because of this enemies who have been there, I never consider them because I will be more wiser than my enemies. And it teaches to us an example there to learn through the word of God. So Satan also thinks it wants to sit on the high throne of God. That's what we read that in in Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 14. The great five eye wills of Satan which it thought it could become like the most high God and sit on the throne of God. But for us as being made lower than the angels, those who overcome to them I will give the power to become to sit in the throne of God. He says in Revelation 2 and 3. Therefore on account of these angels who are stepping in or looking into it. Number one, you grid up. You tie up the things that are becoming an obstacle for you to walk in the ways of God. You tie up the things in simple words for us to say. The things which make Lord God the Father to get anger on us. You wind up those things which are against the will of God. Never go to practice them again. Whenever you want to sin, you think. Stating that. Is God the Father angry on these terms, what I am thinking? And definitely He will be angry on you because you are not thinking straight exegesis. You are not thinking the original languages of the scriptures to be taught in our pulpit. As a pastor teacher, you are going on to think. I could do better over here, I could do better over there and not able to understand the things of the word of God. Definitely Lord God the Father is anger. And you may think he's not anger. So that's why you have been having a peace of mind. You're having a piece of salary. You're having all the things for you to work out. No, he is definitely anger because he laid down his blood. He shedded his blood or he died for us on the cross. So that he says in 1 Timothy 2, 4, none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. And the word knowledge over there in the Greek is epinosis, full knowledge. And in the church, if the believers are perishing without knowing this full knowledge, then the one who has been kept over there as in charge, James 3, 1, to be once again a great caution of warning for us, not many men to become preachers of the word of God because we will be having a tough judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. If you are taking in charge of that church, then be careful that none should perish without having full knowledge of the word of God. And definitely, Lord God the Father will be anger upon us. Because we aren't doing that which is right in the sight of God. We aren't practicing that which is really acceptable in the sight of my Christ. So then how we would grid up our lions looking upon our enemies? And Satan knows very well what you are in Christ Jesus at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone positionally. And what a great achievement you can make up in your life. Satan knows very well. Therefore, what does it want to do? As we read an example of Exodus chapter 5, put them, don't give them straw, put them into double burden. At the same time, they have to make every day the same number of bricks. Because Satan knows very well you are rougher, rougher at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. You are of a sound, clear mind of a healthy one so that you are now coming to proclaim the judgments of God and celebrate marching in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the things of God. Satan knows very well about that in you. So what does he do? He is a murderer from the beginning and is a liar from the beginning. What does he come? He comes to teach you lies. And any pastor teacher who don't go back and dig in the original languages of the scriptures is a liar to you. No matter however pious he may be, however genius he may be. Therefore the wrath of Lord God abideth upon us. We may think we are walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not grieving, not squelching, not vexing. And yet if you don't go to exegete the passages, you are being a liar in the sight of God and he's having his anger abiding upon you because you are maligning his essence. How to illustrate this? If Mr. X has been called to describe Mr. Y and his essence and his attributes, and if Mr. X doesn't take a proper attention to describe his attributes and essence of Mr. Y, then Mr. Y will quite obviously will be anger upon Mr. X. Because he did not fully demonstrate the essence and the qualities and the attributes of Mr. Y. He might have just spoken few things which doesn't matter. They might have been thought as if it is in a general terms to other people. But they haven't gone deep enough to excavate and look upon what is Mr. Y. And what is that they have to describe about him. 
The same principle abides when we are talking about the word of God, which is nothing but the essence of God. We are constantly declaring the mind of Christ and the standards of declaring the truth. And thus, since we have been called to declare the word of God and the mind of God in the essence of God, Mr. Rex, that is, we, the pastor teachers who have been abiding in the pulpits, describing about the characters of Mr. Y, that is, the word of God, they should be well prepared. And therefore, Lord of God compares this thorough or the word of God to a feminine noun called a she. Whenever you look in the Hebrew, you find that the Torah, she, the doctrine, she, if you truly understand the relationship between a wife and husband, between a right man and a right woman, the right man is incomplete without the right woman. And the right woman cannot be completely satisfied without her right husband. Here, right husband is Christ our Lord our God, right woman is his doctrine. And a man, the way how he takes pleasure when we look in Ecclesiastes 9.9, nine, the same way every believer has to take pleasure in the word of God, that is we. And if we don't become the women of God, that is the church, by thoroughly learning the mind of Christ, so that the right man tomorrow he can enjoy with us. The attributes of his holiness in us. We read that same in passages of 1 Peter chapter 1. It has been stated, is holy, so you be holy. Why he wants us to be in the same essence, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. Why he has predestined us to conform to the image of his dear beloved son. So that we are meeting his standards of essence. So that he could enjoy with his right woman tomorrow when we go back for the third title. King of kings and lord of lords to the praise of his glory. Therefore, every believer, it is the will of God the Father that they have to be saved and they have to come to the thorough knowledge, epinosis knowledge, full knowledge of His glory. And if you are not making up our life to meet the full knowledge of His glory, then we have to answer back tomorrow the judgment seat of Christ, what we have lost and why we have lost. And this criminals, Russia, to use the word, dumb dogs, greedy dogs have come and stand in the pulpit not to describe the attributes of God but rather they mis misalign or misrepresent the glory of my God and the essence of my God to the highest. Therefore in Isaiah 53 we read the pain of our heart the barrenness of the womb Every pastor, teacher, including every church age believer has to produce the fruit. But besides giving you this completed kind of scripture on the glory of Lord God, you are producing barrenness in your womb. No fruit. And how do you think? For the great price that he paid on the cross and purchased us, will he be happy rather than being anger on you? He spent his own son on the cross for us. And he made purchase through him, besides that prayed for us in John 14, 16, besides that calling for us in John 17, 6, that we have kept his word. In spite of all of these things, we work out as traitors and we do not do the will of God the Father. Besides, the angels are constantly steeping in and looking in. What is this church age matter given in our hands? And we are not going to make disciples of all the nations. Then what a pain it would be for God the Father and why will he not be anger on us? And you are in siege, you are in seek and search of good health, great health, get great nutrition foods. I don't deny according to climatic conditions the food you need to eat. But the word says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out from the mouth of God. Sometimes your food may turn out to become poison. Sometimes the same food gives you strength for 40 days to rise up and walk and enter into the mountain as Elijah did. One meal and then 40 days, no meal. But the driving force is always the word of God. The driving force for our flesh to be absolutely flawless is nothing but the will of God to be executing in our lives. And this driving force, what we have been given in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit demands 
that God the Father should be pleased by our way of walk. The same thing what he says in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse number 14, to prolong the days of your life on this earth, you should walk in my standards, what I have said before you. He says that to Solomon and Solomon then he wakes up from his dream. You asked a wise and understanding heart, beside, you asked an understanding heart, but I gave you wise and understanding heart. Besides that, I gave you riches as well. And there shall not be anyone before you like the king as you are. And to increase the days of your life, what you have to do, you have to walk in my ways, what I've said before you. But are we walking? He did not walk. Every time you come up, Lord God the Father giving us grace, giving us caution of warning to walk in his ways, to learn his paths, to do his will. But we are so much hard-hearted in our mind that we don't believe those things, we don't understand those things, or we don't even care enough to look those things. And in return, we go, as Deuteronomy 13 teaches to us, if it is your own wife leading you to go for this false man, saying that we shall go and consult an astrologer, we shall go and consult an idolater, or the things pertaining to enchanters, soothsayers, astrologers, numerology, what all we have apart from this Bible. Because we know there are many, many, many cults. Zoroastrianism, speaking to the dead, as we find even in the Bible, Witch of Endor, even the things pertaining to the practicing of necromancy. Whatever you may have, you know, they go for, as even Saul was fed up. No longer the revolution of God was him. Lord God left him, though they did not understand. The simple principle, what Leviticus chapter 10 in verse number 3, Moses said to Aaron, if you are nigh unto the Lord God, it is Lord God who shall be glorified in the midst of this people. But if you are not nigh, that is close, or walking according to the will of Lord God, he leaves you. The same thing happened with Samuel. The same thing with happened Saul when Samuel was dead. And now he goes to which of Endor to find out what will be his fate. Walking contrary to the mind of Christ at one end and you are learning rebellion and you are being taught rebellion by these people. Saying that, come unto us, we will show you the path. So in Deuteronomy 13 he says, if it is your own wife who leads away from the word of God and leads and makes you to go and bow down to other worships or other idols, you should be the first one to stone her and put her to death. You shall not spare her. The same thing when Lord God the Father is angry with us, rather than coming and confessing our sins before Him, gridding up our lions of our mind, and resisting the devil, we go to rebellion nature. We say we find a good diabetic doctor, we say we find a good hypertension doctor. We say we have a specialist in cardiology, we have a specialist in neurology. Nephrology, whatever it may be for you. And the greater you spend your time in searching them, the greater you are going in search of astrologers, in search of XYZ. But the word of God states clear and stands clear. The anger of the Lord God is in you, therefore there is no soundness of flesh in you. Or there is no good health in you. There is no good health or the word to use tamam in your basar. Basar meant to say the flesh. We need to cross check. That's what the point I want to tell. The things that have been passed by not teaching to you right from the child days of yours. Diligently. You know the word of God tells for us, gives an occasion again to come back and say. Today is a day of repentance. Come back and do the will of God. And God the Father knows, testing upon your heart. Because in you in eternity past, what we will be, where we will be, how we will be. Therefore, he says in Ephesians 1, for before the foundation of the world, even in Revelation 17, in verse number 8 and 9, he gives a caution of warning, before the foundation of the world, these names are not been written for them in the book of life. Why? Because there will be always rebellion. But coming to Ephesians 1, 4, he says, your names have been recorded before the foundation of the world for the purpose of becoming his name and glory and praise. For that cause he has given us to be born in his will. John 1, 12, and those who have been born according to his will, he calls them to be the technon children. And this technon children will be the true disciples. The word matate is meant to say it's a rule of conduct for their life. They just don't hear and let go. They make it as a practical life. They make it as a rule of conduct. And from there on you become the adult sons of glory to carry his responsibility in Christ. And today is a day of salvation for you. 
as the thief on the cross was. Every day, every breath, whenever you're letting go to your brethren by not doing the will of God. Every day, every breath, you remember there is no soundness in your flesh. Because you haven't built up your lions. You haven't looked upon on account of these angels. They are constantly claiming that how this man can be. A glory to God, we will see. We will face the challenge. And we foolishly go back, not searching the will of God, neither finding the will of God. We foolishly go along not to listen to the cry of God. As you know, Ishmael's cry was been heard, we read in Genesis 21. When the angel of the Lord God calls, comes and says to Hagar, don't worry. The cry of this lad has been heard by the Lord. But we don't cry in the want of thirst of water. We don't cry for the want of thirst of food. Spiritual food and spiritual water because we are content with our raiment. We are content with our food, what we are eating. And we are not aware about the spiritual food and the spiritual raiment which we need to wear every day. Every breath, in fact, indeed. We are not worried about that. So then how will a voice be heard to the Lord? Ishmael's voice was being heard. The cry of the lad was being heard to the Lord. We find that in Genesis 21, 17 and 18. Twice we record in one verse, the voice of the Lord, voice of the lad was being heard by the Lord. What a privilege it would be for us. But are we crying to God? So that you can go back and look and search the right paths, the straight paths. As it says in Jeremiah 6, go back and search the paths of the world, Olam, Olam, the paths which would lead you to truth. The paths which guide you for truth, the paths which train you up for truth. Have we ever thought of those paths? No, dear brethren, we don't think. We want to look. Are we happy today to have our belly to be fed with some sort of stuff that could be given by someone? Or the food what you can cook because you have enough ration in your hands? <laughs> Joel chapter 1 verses 13 and following teaches to us how. Even the priests, you how. Because the fine floor is cut off. Till that time you will not come back to realize. You know whenever there is no source of ration for you. You go to a job. But you will not realize the problem is with us. Having no relationship with Lord God. Hasn't he provided them the seventh day. The seventh week. Or the seventh year. When they weren't sowing in the field. And they used to get the food. Sustaining them for twice. What they have left for seventh year. Do you think these things are just words written for us in the Bible? Dear brethren, the Bible is our life. If you don't make up to meet the standards of the word of God, you're going to lose forever. If you don't make up to realize the anger of God has been reduced on your part, till that time you will not have good health in your flesh. Therefore it says, writing in 1 Peter 1, Wake up! Now the anger of the Lord God should be kindled more. Do you know why? Because we are in the intensified stage of the angelic conflict. The revelation about the angels which has been given for us, we have been said to judge those angels. Prove these angels that Lord God is right. Tell these angels to realize that they are wrong. That's what we have been given, something great in the church age to make us the great glory of Jehovah, our Lord, our God. So he says, on account of this, dear brethren, grid up. Cut off those things that are against the mind of Christ. Anazonumi. We use the word as metaphorically to make your garments closely around your bodies, fastened with a leather belt, so that they should not become a hindrance for your work. And then he uses the word lions. The word lions called for us ospas, O-S-P-H-U-S. And that the word meant to say, the things pertaining to generative power, where in the Hebrew school of thoughts, it is a semen resided. The same thing we read that in Ephesians 6. Grid up your lions with truth. Here also grid up your lions for what? Having in you generative power. Having in you the virality of your strength. In the word of God, through the will of God. 
If there is no word of God in you, then there is no virality in you. People may think, because of age, you lose virality. But the word says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, in verse number 5, Neither the eyesight of Moses was dimmed, neither is vigor or valor, the word called as his freshness in the Hebrew. He was always the same freshness. It decreased. Why? Because always it was the word of God driving his lions to do the will of God. Because the word of Lord God is alive and powerful. Zoe and Energia. It's the word powerful over there for us, operating force. And heaven and the earth will vanish off, but his word abideth forever, because we have been given this great word. We have been born again by the incorruptible seed, not by the corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. Though the heaven and the earth will vanish off, and comparing that to the glory of man to a grass, he says it vanishes off. But what we have been begotten by the incorruptible word of God, we shall abide forever. So here also we read what is the virality for us. Grid up your lions. Where there is a power resided in you, in your lions. The Hebrews think it is the semen power which has been given for them. And we need to look. When we have been given such kind of a lions to be gridded with the word of God. And if we don't grid them with the word of God, then what happens to our lions? We are dead. And why do you think the word of Lord God calls always two to be the witnesses? When Moses and Elijah were the people who came on the Mount of Transfiguration to talk about the Lord. These are the two things, the two witnesses. As Deuteronomy says for us, you shall have two witnesses. And when Moses was being still without an eyesight problem and having that same vigor and valor in his flesh not been decreased, if he is a one witness... To witness those same things, we have to be the people as called as a second witness to that word so that then the scripture could be justified. Therefore, he has given for us that limitless power in the church age. He has given to us the mentoring, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to the highest and you haven't known what a powerful weapon it is. It can match from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 the various attributes of this growth man, what the Bible records for us as an example. In each and everything that is pleasing to God the Father and the things which we are not you live it off. Like Abel, like Noah, like Enoch, walk with the Lord. You can prove that. That's a witness. If Enoch was one, you shall be the other, another Enoch as two witnesses because you can walk with the Lord God till you die. In the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in doing His will. That is one end. You have Noah, the man of a righteous one who preached 120 years. Then where is the another Noah? It is that you have to be the another Noah. The two witnesses. Abraham walked by faith. Who is another Abraham? It is what you have to be because we believe the things by faith. We walk with the standards by faith. We should be the another witness. Then the two witnesses could be justified. Then the scripture could be saying for us as we read in Deuteronomy, there shall be two witnesses, if not that witness is gone. The same thing happened in John chapter 8 regarding that woman. They did not find the other witness. The scriptures what have been given for us, if the, if the holy men of God, what we find in the Bible as heroes of faith, to match their lives to be witnessing or to look their lives to be alive and powerful, it is what every believer can match them in the word of God, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as the second witness so that their lives also could be justified through us. Therefore we have been said, you shall comprehend with all saints, Catalambano in Ephesians 3. After Abraham you will find great men like Moses. What did he do? Spent 40 days and 40 nights before the presence of Lord God twice. And you have the same example of experience in your life. It's not that we go to some mount. It is that every day, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us. We shall be those witnesses. Are you able to do it? Can you prove that? Can you realize that? 
and you lose it, isn't it? So can you be that witness? Every breath, are you aware? We are being indwelled by the Trinity. But you say, no, Lord. <coughs> My pastor hasn't taught me that. My minister hasn't taught me that. You will never realize you are being baptized by the Holy Spirit of God at the moment of salvation, being kept until the day of redemption, being sealed. You will not realize that. You will not believe that because you are not witnessing to Abraham. Don't worry. There are enough men, as he says in First Timothy as well as in Haggai, where he says for us in Haggai or Habakkuk, I think, he says that the Lord God, the Father, knoweth the men whom they are for him, and he hath sealed and kept for him apart. They will match from Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, the good characters of Lord God given to us to be outstanding in the Bible. And they will be those men who will Ma meet and match to be the second witnesses for them. In everything they will be twice. They will play their role with Job. They will play their role with Moses. They will play their role with David. A man of the Lord God's own heart. They will play their role with Samuel. Then why do you think these examples have been given for us when you will match them? Why do you have this great characters in the Bible for us to learn from them and to match like them in our life. Therefore, you have been given the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in you to match them, not just to read them and pass away. Therefore, we have been said the multi-dimensions, the polypicolous wisdom of God. Not just one unique character you live. You have to live, have to match all these characters in the Bible which have been recorded to be the Hall of Fame or the Heroes of Faith. Like Isaiah, if you have been ministry being hindered in your church, come back and start your Bible college, a Bible class in your own home. I have done that. Like Ezekiel, whether they hear of Obia going to do the will of God. Like Jeremy as a weeping prophet, teaching the word of truth that he has released from his weapons of armory, his men are able to do that. Like Zechariah telling that what God the Father intends to love the truth and he hates the lies. Example of Joshua the high priest, the two all your plans when we look under the ministry of Zerubbabel and Joshua and the way how Joshua was being cleansed in Zechariah 3 saying that once again don't sin but walk with me in truth. Have you matched that? We fall, we fail. Given a chance for you to come back. That's what the Bible is all about. His hands are still stretched out so that you could come back and walk and witness to be the second witness for those people to match and justify their clauses. And that's what we the church age believers are. In the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, witnessing the truth. Confirming to the image of his dear beloved son, superior to all the nature of the human who lived on this earth in the Bible, Christ our Lord of our God is the greatest one. So now the Bible tells you need to match Christ Jesus our Lord of our God to walk like him. And you have to confirm to his image for which cause you have been predestined in Christ. So in everything, no matter whatever you take, do you have a heart of Joseph? As the Bible records in Matthew that he was a righteous man. He did not want to open it up outwardly to all. Do you have a witness like Paul? Do you have a witness like Peter? Everyone we find always the grace of Lord God in the Bible is that those who were earlier sinners and failures now after receiving the grace of God or in simple words in Acts 9.3 seeing the light of the heaven as Paul experienced that they now became once again the great believers of all time. Earlier they were sinners but now they took a U-turn. The same people now promulgate the grace of God But today we are not able to realize to grid up our lions which is so much essential. Where is the strength for you in your lions? If anyone would ask, do you have the virality of semen in you to produce spiritual children? That demands time, exercise. That demands strength. How you acquire that strength? Daily intake of word of God. Physical strength is needed for you to produce your physical children, isn't it? That's what the unbelievers walk according to that rule. But the word of Lord God teaches to us, spiritual strength demands 
for every details of life, either social, economical, political disasters in your life, to recollect them back, to recollect it back again to normalcy. It is a spiritual word of God. When you have been spiritually distracted, then all these areas will work out to be distraction for you. And that's what it happens, dear brother. And many of the people have been destroyed today for lack of such knowledge. And you think we cannot get back to the will of God because we are far away. No way, dear brother. And everyone has been loved with the same love. He doesn't love me more or love you less. He loves all the same. Because he purchased all in the same righteousness of God. The only thing is that your diligent desire to do the will of God makes the difference. Constantly like that Sarah Phoenician woman who waited upon the Lord. Though the Lord said it is not good to give this food for the dogs. She said even the dogs will collect the crumbs under the table and eat. That should be our desire now to do the will of God. And we are such really. We are the dogs. And this dog should become faithful dogs like Caleb. Not this dogs to be the dogs of which Philippians 3 2 says, Be aware about these dogs. These dogs are not having clear mind. Their minds have been absolutely distorted and been confused with evil things. We are cleansed out first from, from this evil nature and to a good nature to be a faithful dog to the Lord. And in order to continue and pursue, there it demands the word of God. And that's what many people have failed today in our pulpits. The way how this word of God records for us in 1 Peter chapter 1 should caution us our minds to realize even the angels are rubber making to look those things what the Bible has been teaching for us. What the pulpits teach around. Therefore, he says, grid up your loins on account of this. Make up the standards of your lions, the strength. And this lions of what? He says, you are thinking. Again, the word called as dynonia, which is called for us dia, plus that is through. The word called as nous, dynonia, the combination of two words. The word news meant to say the mind compromising alike the faculties of perceiving and understanding and those of feeling, judging and determining or the intellectual faculty of the understanding. So dynonia meant to say the power of considering judging soberly, calmly and impartially. The particular more of thinking and judging that is thoughts, feelings, purposes and desires. So your purposes, thoughts, feelings and desires, he says, grid up that first. Make it up clear to the mind of Christ. Make it up clear to the will of God. Don't use it vaguely and vainly in the world. So first, the lions of your mind. Therefore, Romans chapter 12, verses 1, to 3 teaches to us. Christianity is nothing but renovating the standards of your thinking. Metanoia. It has to be a repentance through the proper process of Metamorphomai, complete transformation. And Satan comes to say, you don't want metamorphomai, he takes only metaschematizovans. Only outward transformation, but inward they are still the same. And today in the present Christendom, we find many men as metaschematizovans. Outward just they appear to be good, but inward they are still the same. The worst criminals are Christians today. The worst people to cheat anyone are the Christians today. And the best people are also Christians today. So dear brethren, your metaschematizovans will cause you that report. But a metamorphomai will be the best ones to do the will of God. How? By gridding up your lions first, the lions of your mind. And then he says, be so bare. The word meant to say to be calm and collected in spirit, Nepo. How you can be calm and collected in spirit when you have enough knowledge in comparison to your enemy. And now Psalm 119 teaches to us what is about our enemy. What does our enemy do? So, we need to look as the word of God goes to say for us in Psalms 119 particularly. Teaching to us in verse number 98. Because if you don't have calm and collected spirit, 
to have in the sense to say more knowledge and wisdom than satha in simple words so that you can trample satha under your feet the word says through thy commandments hath made me wiser than my enemies but in the hebrew the structural thought is different the standards in the hebrew will certainly clear off any doubt what we have in our mind it says for us in the hebrew dear brethren whether you believe it or not it begins with first as our enemies could be he says for us understanding the principle that how you could be calm and collected in spirit when you have more knowledge than your than your enemies then only you can be having calm and collected in spirit so he says from once being enemies of me he begins with that he doesn't say through thy commandments the translation goes on to say like that in the english but in the hebrew it says the one who are enemies of me and then he compares she is making wise me and the word she again refers to doctrine and what it is it is making wise and what is this wise kakma the word kakma we read in the six spirits of our lord god given to every believer in this church age so it is not just we come to the first spirit or second spirit or fifth spirit it is what the sixth spirit was been even given to solomon to say you just asked bina but i am giving you kakma as well as bina of your heart the same thing over here for us he goes on to claim for us to have to be sober to have to be calm and collected in spirit you have to have wisdom greater than your enemies so he says the ones being enemies of me she is making wise me and what is that she he refers now to instructions of you and the word instructions is mitsav m i t s a v h and the meaning of mitsav meant to say the code of wisdom you have the code of wisdom you are wise and the code of wisdom is nothing but the word of god you are wise than whom than your enemies so what you be you be calm and collected in spirit you be sober because day by day you're gridding up your lions to know what is truth day by day you're passing down the stages of the first spirit fear and then you're coming to the second stage knowledge and you're increasing in your strength and then you're making up your counsel and then you're having your understanding and you're coming now to wisdom because you understand now what is good and what is evil you discern now what is hebrews 5:14 which says strong meat can make them to understand what is good and what is wrong like that you grow up you realize what is really important to the will of god so that you shall not be found anger in the face of god our lord god's anger face shall not be abiding upon you so that you will not have great soundness in your flesh so you discern now you make up in your mind the testimonies of lord god to be more because they teach more than our teachers what they teach to us and the testimonies of lord god alone abide forever so have we known what are the testimonies of lord god that's what we are saying for you you have to become a testimony of lord god for which cause he has called us to witness the truth by becoming the second witness and those testimonies we read from abel or adam and we look upon those testimonies and we understand what went wrong there and what shall not go wrong in us and are already if we are what we are wrong in it and how to correct our lives so we make up those things you know very clearly we learn that we exercise that we make up that so how to have this calm and collected spirit the spirit number 6 called as kakma wisdom and that wisdom will make you to be more wiser than the enemies of us personal national or in fact need our adversary satan therefore we have been said to trample satan under our feet why you worry about satan so in whatever whichever manner you take it says for us we have the work of the word of god in whichever place you go we have the work of the will of god 
We cannot say that we have been wise enough by not doing the will of God. If you are not doing the will of God, you are the foolish ones. But he says, on account of these angels, dear brethren, you be aware. Grid up your lions of your mind. Cut short the things that are against the will of God. And be sober. Calm and collected in spirit. Because you can be calm and collected in spirit when you have greater wisdom than Satan. When you can understand the tactics of Satan, as Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. We know what it is. And thus we go to spend the fragments of the knowledge of God every place we go. And are you aware about the cunning fables of Satan? Then you are not wise, you are not sober, you are not calm and collected. You fall a trap for every mannerism of this earth, rationalism and empiricism what we call, or the stoic logics what these people will believe. And they go on to prove themselves in every mannerism of that syllogisms or whatever they take you know in their life to prove because of this because of that and they come back ultimately for the demonic forces the standards of astrology the standards of your hand palm reading the standards of everything you know consulting the dead soothsayers but we have a spirit in us in comparison to Daniel too which is far greater than the spirits of this world. <coughs> and in 1 John 4 we have been stated, greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. Why you worry? Why you fear about these things on this earth? In order to be wiser than your enemy, learn the word of God. She makes me wiser. Who? The doctrine, the word of God. The code of wisdom, which the word which has been used over here. And besides that, he teaches that these instructions are for Eon and she is to me for Eon. You know, using the word feminine, if you would say, she is mine forever. Having a possession over your wife or for the things which you love. Like that he says, doctrine is mine forever, she is mine forever. Olam Olam forever. Therefore, forever it is my only meditation, Siak. And this meditation is what we read in 1997. It meant to say for us whenever I open up our mouth, it should be Bible doctrine. Whenever I speak, it is Bible doctrine. All the days of my life, Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine. And that's why I love your meditations. That's why I love your testimonies, the law, the Torah. And because I have this doctrine with me forever, I know I will be wiser than my enemies. The tactics of my enemies. And Satan knows very well it cannot touch you because greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. And above that you have been operating in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so Satan cannot touch you. But your negative volution not to do the will of God accurately and properly taking the word of God and not doing it according to the will of God but rather trampling it under your feet is what causes the Lord's wrath to abide on you and that's where you fail that's why you have to understand why there is no soundness in your flesh why there is no peace in your bones or in your essence or substance you should realize because of the guilt of sin. You have received a lot and said, you are going to do the work of Lord, but you haven't done it. In spite of giving you to be wise than your enemies, you left the right track. You haven't fully occupied in that work. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, time is short. Therefore, it is better for you not to marry than to please your wife or your husband rather than pleasing Lord God. If at all you are married, be as if you are not married. If you are having property, be as if you are not enjoying the property because time is short. You cannot enjoy the details of life at one hand at the same time in comparison to the work of God. 
We have been inscribed in us to have a coin and the coin is Lord God's name on us. As he said to Caesar, coin was there on the Caesar face. So Caesar, give back the things to Caesar. If it is God, give back the things to Lord God. But they failed even as we failed today. Dear brother, how we can be sober, how we can be calm and collected in spirit, knowing your enemy has been defeated, knowing that there is no sickness to you, knowing that you have been absolutely rougher, knowing that in full Lord our God paid in full for us in Isaiah 53, then you can be absolutely calm and collected. And knowing that in Isaiah 54, 17 we read, no weapon that is formed against thee will ever prosper. Knowing that though you are old, the youth and young may fail, but those who wait upon the Lord God will renew their strength. And those whose mind has been kept constantly, Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, they will be having absolute peace of God. No, you do you know that? Constantly being having to keep the word of God as our testimonies. Do you know that? Therefore, in the same Psalm 119, we have to learn some of the verses which should certainly prick our heart. The death march, what is going through, it teaches to us in Psalm 119, in verse number 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. In verse 30 of the same 119, I have chosen the way of truth, Ameth, the judgments I have laid before me. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto the path. The famous verse 119, verse 105. James 125 again. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The word blessed is Macarian. And what else we want, dear brother? Therefore, he says for us, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revolution of Jesus Christ. So he says, unto the perfection of which God the Father has called, having absolute confidence on that, which has been brought unto us through the revolution, the word of God, let's be obedient children and not fashioning ourselves according to the former lusts of our ignorance. That's what we fail. We are not obedient. Neither we are the word called as technon children in the, in the Greek. But in return, we are fashioning ourselves, that is, suschematizoa, that is, to confirm one's mind, that is, one's mind and character to another's pattern. Fashioning ourselves to the details of life, as Satan leads. Fashioned our mind and character to the former lusts because of our ignorance. And you are forgetting that the one who hath called you is holy, so you are to be holy in all manner of conversation. The word anastrapho that is called as conduct, behavior, and manner of life. As the word says, written in 1 Peter 1.16, Be holy, for I am holy. So do not be ignorant. Do not have yourselves fashioning to the former lusts. Wake up, he says. And the one who is called you, the word called is again kaleo, to call and to give you a name, the name of a Christian. So he says, he is holy, so you ought to be holy in every mannerism of conversation, anastrapho, your conduct, your behavior, in every mannerism of your life, you have to be absolutely holy. And the word for us is hagios, the most holy thing like a saint. And you are a saint. Therefore, dear brethren, he says, if you may, if in verse number 17, and if we call on the Father who without respecter of persons judgeth according to every man's work, so pass the time of your journeying that is called as your pilgrimage trip here in the fear of the Lord for boss. And you cannot have that fear of the Lord until and unless you see the light of God. And how you can see the light of God? Your own flesh will be showing you the light of God provided your sicknesses in it. We have been redeemed with an incorruptible thing, the word of God. We have been given to be sober. We are given to be greeting up our lions in the word of God. And not having incorruptible things in us. And not operating in us. 
leads us to be corruptible like the standards of this former lusts of ignorance, fashioning ourselves to the all sin nature on this earth. And yet, dear brethren, there is no soundness in your flesh, because the Lord's anger abideth upon you. There is no peace in your substance in whichever way you go through, your health or your prosperity or wealth, because you are guilty of that sin. And we all are guilty of that sin because we are not carrying your cross every day. Neither we are making disciples. How we can have flesh, freshness in our flesh? We fail to do the work of God. And we claim to be the work of God. Dear brother, what a sad thing it is for us to know. That though we have been stated repeatedly, rid up your lions, for which cause he has chosen you before the foundation of the world. We are not proving out the work, what he called us to do in this church. Dear brother, until and unless we face sicknesses, challenges in our life, people may not abide to look that the Lord's wrath is upon them. And COVID-19 pandemic sicknesses is such kind of a challenge to many of the people on this earth who haven't abided themselves to the work of God. And yet, many people in this world are perishing not realizing that they need to make straight with the Lord God first rather than making themselves to be straight in the rebellion character of this earth. Dear brethren, how many days more we shall abide by not gridding up our alliance of mind? How many days more we shall not be sober? How many days more we shall be still foolish not to be wise enough than our enemies called us Satan? Dear brother, you need to wake up to this thing. The greater the time you spend in the details of life but not looking the will and the mind, the will and the mind of Christ, the greater will be your life. A failure of Psalms 53, sorry, Isaiah 53. Though he has paid in full for us, you haven't received the things of Christ. And that will be your fate. And how many days more, dear brother, and you decide? There may be some disturbances in the tapes that we are recording because of some wind as well as rain. But if it is the grace of Lord God for you to listen to be the witness of a second one on this earth in comparison to the people of Genesis to Revolution, then you listen to the word of God and change your life to the will of God. And if you think it's not needed, let Lord God add to his word, his blessing. Because we have done our work. It is now left to you to do your work. And we come to do our work in sowing the seed every day to the will of God. Whether it may rain or shine or breeze or what. At the best what we can recording to keep it recorded. And if you don't believe these things dear brethren, let Lord help you. Being sober, calm and collected in spirit, being wiser than our enemies. She, doctrine can make me because doctrine is with me forever and forever. Allah, Allah. Because his word is a meditation for me all day long and I love it. All my life, I can be wiser than my enemies. Being wiser than our enemies and doing the will of God and performing the mind of Christ to be free from the wrath of God abiding upon us will give us good health and great covenant of peace to be established. As in Numbers chapter 6 we read, the blessings of the Old Testament saints, particularly the priests, would give. And there we have a lot many things to learn, which we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to learn those things as well. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide? We shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory. So with our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. 
Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry the Sothon Laga, herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond from my witnesses where we have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be your witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O oh Lord, even the angels desire to look into the things what we have. On account of that, O oh Lord, help us to build up our alliance of mind, to be absolutely sober, calm and collected in the spirit, and in return to say, to be wiser than the enemy, which has been always operating to mislead with its mischievous works. You have told us to trample Satan out of our feet, O Lord, through the word of God, abiding and ruling in us in the power of God, the Holy Spirit. When we are completely dead to the world and being reigning in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we can easily achieve thy goal. Help each and every believer, O Father, to understand these things. Through the word itself, they could be more wiser than the enemy, and they could do thy will, so that they could not only have a good health, but also the covenant of peace being established in their life. When thine anger is been reduced, when we are doing that things which are pleasable in us, as I have said in Luke 2, 10, O Lord, good pleasure and goodness to them, those who do the will of God. Help us, Father, to do it faithfully. For which cause you have chosen us and elected us and appointed us and given such kind of a great wealth in our life to do thy glory. And let's not be losers, O Lord. But help every breath to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, walking to thy will, O Lord. In Christ, my soul, be us, gracious name, we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and let challenge challenges by these words. The Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten to thy will. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we praise our Lord.